Whether you've been drinking kombucha for decades or you've just started enjoying it, Remedy has taken it mainstream and is shaking up fizzy drinks for good. So what is kombucha? Well, in a nutshell, it is fermented tea. This live cultured drink has absolutely no sugar naturally and is I Quit Sugar approved, as well as being completely raw, unpasteurized and packed with organic acids and antioxidants, which means it's actually good for you. Remedy Kombucha comes in nine tasty flavors and my go-to is the ginger lemon. What will yours be? Learn more about the Remedy range at remedydrinks.com. And if you want a discount on your kombucha or any product in the Remedy range, just use my special promo code at the online checkout. Add the word UNHEAR, all one word, and receive 15% off your next purchase. This applies to all countries, so even if you're listening outside of Australia, the discount will apply. Well, hello everyone. I'm Maritza Barone and welcome to my podcast, Things You Can't Unhear. Today on the show, we have Dr. Jennifer Barham Floriani, and she is a best selling and award winning author, speaker, and chiropractor. Her book, which you may well know, Well Adjusted Babies, has sold over half a million copies around the world. And as a mother of four boys, Jennifer has become an authentic and resourceful guide for families. And she speaks around the world on common sense approaches to health, pregnancy and parenting. Jennifer's career has been dedicated to encouraging the health literacy of parents. She has been awarded Victorian and Australian Chiropractor of the Year, International Woman Chiropractor of the Year, and has also received international awards for outstanding service to chiropractic and the Being of Light Humanitarian Award. Now, Jennifer, I think that's better than a Golden Globe. <laughs> Hilarious. It does sound like quite a mouthful. <laughs> it, 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 well, it is. It's amazing. Being of Light Humanitarian Award. What did that even involve? Well, there's a, a group, um, you know, who have, I guess, members throughout the world and their whole ethos is about acknowledging and working with people who are dedicated to making a change Amazing, um, you know, in in a proactive, positive way. So it was a real honour. Oh, was... absolutely. Now I've actually wanted to have you on this podcast for a long time, but you're a busy woman. You're back and forward from the states, aren't you? Yeah, quite a lot. So a what are you doing times. there mainly? Um, in previous years, it's been a lot with the profession itself. I guess upskilling and um, working with practitioners on how to work with families and kids, and more recently much more on a public level, which is really where I'm excited to, you know, to be diving into. Mm. Um, And some some big public events I've also, um, you know, which is a real honour to talk alongside some of my mentors. So it's exciting where things are going. And I think there's, you know, um, a real awareness growing amongst parents. And so I've been, um, you know, very blessed to work with some amazing people. Mm. Now, chiropractic has been in your life for a very long time. It's pretty much all of your life. Tell us about the background of that. Yeah, sure. I think chiropractic picked me. um, (laughs) So I'm the youngest of six kids and my um, dad was a radiographer and my mum was a nurse. So they were very entrenched in the allopathic or medical approach to health. And different things happened for them. They decided that they wanted to change it up. I think they were a bit disillusioned. So uh, with five kids, they moved to Canada and basically studied chiropractic. And then um, then I was born. So it was really, I guess, at a juxtaposition for them of their whole health culture or the ethos around what they thought, how they would raise us was changing. So it was a great platform for me to then just... I guess, really um, understand the importance of asking good questions and having that inquiry mindset of, well, why is that? Why do we think that way? Is it working? Mm. You know, Questioning things a little bit more than yeah. just taking things for face value or yep. what you've been told in mainstream yeah, medical advice. Yeah, I, and I think when you're, you know, when you're a little person, you are such a sponge. And I really grew up in a family practice And, you know, it was credit to, I guess, the way that holistic um, health modalities work. So whether you're talking about chiropractic or Chinese medicine or anything that honours that intelligence in the body, from a young age, I got to observe, you know, people coming in and I would ask them questions about, why are you here? You know, why are you Mm. bringing your baby? And they were just so 
authentic and enthusiastic in their response because they were having change. And, you know, from, from a young age, I observed that and I was like, wow, this is amazing. Mm. You, you were definitely picked. <laughs> you were definitely <laughs> picked. Now, it's funny because your parents were in that industry yeah. and you've also married a chiropractor. Yeah, I know. Interesting. And, and so <laughs> the other thing, you know, I'm the youngest of six kids, five of us are chiropractors. No. Married to a chiropractor in his family, there's, you know, again, probably six chiropractors. I think at last count with nieces and nephews, there's about 16 of us. So that just goes to show how influential this whole industry is and the whole yeah. practice of chiropractic is. Yeah, I know. And it is, it, you know, it has that ripple effect because you, if once you observe people being adjusted and just sort of see that life force really get um, stirred and people start to identify that they can make, you know, empowered health decisions, that's infectious. You know, mm. our eldest son is off to Barcelona really soon to start a five-year you know, course there, which is chiropractic and it's the best one in the world at the moment. So, you know, so he's, he's moving on to be a yeah. chiropractor as well. <laughs> Unreal. I love this. <laughs> so fun? there's a, there's a bit of a dynasty. <laughs> there really is. And it's not something that you would have, I, I, I believe from how I've seen you parent, it's not something yeah. you would have pushed them into. It no. would be something that they organically fell yeah. in love with themselves. Yeah. Because, you know, Maritza, it's not an easy profession still at the moment. While, you know, we get amazing, um, generally speaking, results with people and they love that and that's what's infectious and they spread the word. With chiropractic at the moment, you know, there's a lot of scrutiny. Sometimes, you know, if you buy into it, you could feel like a second rate citizen. Um, Whereas if you just, you know, keep that mindset of what it is that we do and what we offer, it's incredibly powerful. And I guess, you know, people speak volumes to, you know, what they've observed in changes for themselves. So it is an exciting time. Um, but again, no, I wouldn't have necessarily pushed any of our boys into it because you have to be, I guess, genuinely passionate about it and, and serving and, and helping people. Mm. Your husband, Simon, and yourself are genuinely passionate about it. And you spend your lives going out there and trying to educate the world. And you in particular yeah. have, have, really work with parents and families. Yeah. Why was that such an important thing for you to do particularly? Um, I guess if I get to, you know, the crux of what I'm really about, it is, you know, yes, I feel blessed to have chiropractic as a background because it's given me a wonderful understanding about how the body works. What I'm most passionate about is really helping parents, um, you know, just regain their strength and power in parenting in a way that they want to. I think that there's a lot of, um, you know, parents who feel really disillusioned in knowing how to lead their family's health. And so I guess, you know, I'm super passionate about just working with parents and helping them raise, you know, healthy and vibrant and robust kids because so many kids today are suffering. Mm. And, you know, it really breaks my heart. There's so many kids who are labelled you know, they're um, suffering with obesity or diabetes or, you know, any neurodevelopmental disorder. And with my background and in addition to chiropractic, you know, the years of research that I've dabbled in and the writing and all of those things, it just doesn't need to be that way. You know, for me, any health challenge is like a jigsaw puzzle and you piece it all together and you can come up with, you know, opportunities to really overcome it. And so that's what I'm most passionate about. Absolutely. I know as a parent, and I had my first daughter when I was 29, so I was yeah. quite young, yeah. and I had no other, none other of my friends actually had children or not many yeah. of them. So I was the first of many, and yeah. now there's plenty around. But yeah. I had no idea what I was doing, and I really just took all of the advice that I was given at the hospital and, and through the mainstream medical centres yep. as gospel. And I didn't, I almost felt like I didn't have the right to question it. And yeah. things have changed a lot since then. And I'm looking, you know, elsewhere and, and researching and questioning things a lot more. And I think that's so important to do. And especially the book that you have created, Well Adjusted Babies, is almost like a Bible to so many parents out there. Yeah. Um, Tell us about the contents of that book and why you think every parent should read it. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I mean, I think that, like you said, you know, the, we, we, we get to a point in time where we sort of think, why, why am I not speaking my truth? Why am I not questioning these things? And I think it's because we bought 
that from our parents and mm. our grandparents, you know, that, that tendency to hand over our health to somebody else and say, you fix it and just give it back to me, you know? Mm. And yet, you know, it's, um, there's a lot of people, even though there's, there's a growing consciousness about health and wellness, there's still a lot of people who think that their health is the result of bad genes or bad germs or bad luck. And, you know, we're starting to see a shift in that. But the reason that I guess my book has done so, so well is because it, it questions a lot of that. And it, and it encourages parents to ask good questions because even if we think about those myths, you know, um, the whole thought process we have around genes, oh, my mum had cardiovascular disease, I'm probably going to get that. Or, you know, my dad had cancer, I'm a, I, I could be vulnerable to getting cancer. And yet, Maritza, when we look at the research behind that, you can have identical twins with the same genetic profile as adults live in two different environments and one will get cancer and one won't, Mm. you know. And so what happens is, is that, you know, it's very much dependent on our, on our environment and our environment triggers genes. And so we may have a genetic predisposition, but if our lifestyle, you know, is life giving, then those genes may not get triggered. And what I get, you know, so fired up about is that today the high incidence that we have of autism, of neurodevelopmental challenges, of asthma, allergies in our kids, eczema, you know, diabetes, obesity, all of these major health challenges. When we look at what's going on, we are triggering genes in a way that we never have before. So I have so many couples who are thinking of having babies, parents going, what the heck is going on with our kids? And you look around, you know, kids today, they don't look healthy. A lot of them have low tone, you know, they're overweight, dark circles under their eyes, they react to everything. There's a reason for that. There's always a reason. Mm. And so I guess Well Adjusted Babies talks a lot about the myths that we've bought into and then weighing up with all the decisions we have, what are the pros and cons? You know, because we're so used to just buying in or adopting somebody else's thoughts about something. And those thoughts or that opinion may be completely unexamined. Mm. They may have adopted that from somebody else. And then, you know, they adopt it from somebody else. And if we actually pause and think about, this is my decision. These are the smorgasbord of options before me. What are the pros and cons that I need to consider? Because, you know, there's always pros and cons in anything we we are looking at. Mm. And I guess that's a gift that I have in helping to lay those breadcrumbs out for people. I think parents and families and just individuals are all waking up. And we do have these days much more information accessible to us. I mean, our parents did not have this information accessible at their fingertips. So I think that's one of the huge reasons why a lot of us are completely waking up to to what's and out there. And that's exciting, isn't it? Is it? Really you know, it really exciting. is the best part of social media and this digital age. Yeah, there's that definitely we can pros be, and cons. Yeah, but yeah you know. Big pro. Um, and we can be anywhere in the world learning from different people on the other side of the world about health or about parenting. And I think that's, you know, incredible. I follow Vishen Lakiani from yeah. Mind Valley really yeah. closely. And he talks about brules, which are bullshit rules right. that we've grown, grown yeah. up with in our lives. Yeah. And we don't have to accept all of the information that has come to us and it is it's so exciting it's there's definitely a movement happening and an awareness but I do want to delve into common sense you talk about common sense for common problems in in your work and I'll give you an example because this is something that is a small problem that has come up last night at my house my Mm -hmm. youngest daughter who's nearly eight has a very sore ear she's been complaining about it for three days yeah. and I've just sort of been trying to boost her immunity with different vitamins and things like that. And last night she woke up in the middle of the night absolutely screaming in agony and my first instinct was to reach for a painkiller just to yeah. ease her pain. I know you you talk about other options and natural remedies when it comes to pain management and things like that. So how would you manage that in the middle of the night, because I know Simon has told me in the past that none of your four children have ever had Panadol, for example. Yeah. Yeah. They've never had any drugs. So how would you have managed mine? I know many of us parents listening today would have 
encounter this exact yeah, same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and those scenarios are always really daunting. You know, um, I think, you know, it's that sort of primitive part of us as a parent. We were like, oh my goodness, my baby's in pain, you know. Mm. Um, but some of the best things to do in that scenario are just to remember that, you know, there's always a reason for symptoms. And so the body is giving us some kind of feedback. And when it comes to ear infections, it's kind of like a plumbing issue. And, you know, with little children, the way that the eustachian tube or the inner part of the ear sits is it's really flat. And so often it can have a buildup of fluid while the brain, you know, the skull's growing and shaping and all of those things. So some basic things would be when they're in that much pain, I guess, is just being hands on. Like I would literally be sort of rubbing and working through in and around their ear, working through their skull, putting a cold flannel on their head, you know, trying to help them manage potentially their temperature and their pain threshold. Um, and then by doing that, by creating movement through the ear and the skull, you're helping with that drainage. Um, and then, you know, I would certainly be the, the next day, as, as you probably would have anyway, you know, having her adjusted. Um, and the beauty in that is that it's feedback to the brain. So chiropractic works on the principle of health comes from within. So if there are those symptoms, then part of the nerve messages are not working clearly. And so an adjustment helps that master controller to work out, oh my goodness, there's, you know, a buildup of fluid in this area, there's bugs, and it helps to fight that infection better. Um, so, you know, in the middle of the night, it would be doing what you can naturally to help with the pain. And the thing is to, you know, it's easy for me to say that, but what I also do is encourage parents to go, you know, when they have the time to look into what are the effects of those painkillers, because when you have a foundation of information, it's much easier to make a decision. So when we take Tylenol, when we take paracetamol, Maritza, so what that does is, yes, it helps curb the fever, but it skews the immune system. And if that child's already inflamed, that can, you know, potentially start a spiral effect for other things. But Tylenol, paracetamol, all of those things, it's important to remember any drug that we take depletes the body of what's known as glutathione, which is your really important antioxidant. And we need that. And a lot of the time we can be deficient in that and that impacts our immune system. So it's all those little decisions that really impact our child's bigger, you know, health picture. And so, you know, celebrating when you get through a night like that by curbing the fever with a cold flannel or by massaging their head, working through their neck on their lymph glands, you know, just to help with the drainage and, you know, working with our children in the, in, in honoring how intelligent they are, you know, buddy, I know you're pain, you know, you're in pain. Let's get through this. Your body's so clever fighting these bugs. Mm. How amazing are you? That yeah. sort of thing. Teaching them how amazing the body yeah. is at healing itself. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. then the next day, you know, once you're through that crisis point going, Okay, so, you know, last night was really hard. What do you think we need to do to build your immune system at the moment? Mm. Are you tired? You know, are you getting to bed? And sometimes, you know, as our kids get older, you might think that they've actually gone to bed. And if you're not monitoring, <laughs> they might be on their phone or they might be just mucking around. And, you know, so it's making sure they're getting the rest that they need because they're growing. What's their nutrition been like? You know, for working parents, it's hard sometimes to monitor that mm. and really talking to our kids about how nutrition impacts their immune system. Yeah. Some of those fundamentals. When the timing's right and making that time to empower our kids because, you know, the health culture that you bring them up with shapes their health for their lifetime. Mm. And if we don't make time for those conversations, then again we set up that ritual of they just buy somebody else's, you know, thought process around, oh, well, I've got an earache, I'll take a drug for that. I've got yeah. a headache, I'll take a drug for that. And then the process continues yeah, into their absolutely. lives and their children's lives yeah. and so on. Yeah. There has been a lot of scrutiny in the media, as you said earlier, yeah. um, with chiropractic care for children in particular. And I wanted to give you this opportunity to talk about this <clears> because <throat> Simon, your husband, was featured uh, on a very popular mainstream program on yeah. TV recently. And I saw on one of your Instagram posts, you believed he was very unfairly edited yeah. and, uh, and shaped in that interview. Um, let's talk about it if you're, if you're happy to, because I, I feel like, because I know you both quite well and I, I saw that segment, yeah. um, I do believe that wasn't a true portrayal of what 
chiropractic care is all about and especially with children in particular. Yeah. So let's let's have a chat about it. I want to hear your opinion on how he was portrayed and in particular how chiropractic care can be so beneficial for children. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, he's a big boy. Like, yeah. you know, it, it was fine. And as they say, all media is good media because the outcome of that is, you know, tens of thousands of parents who've utilised chiropractic all came out of the woodwork in, you know, kind of this how could you do that? And we've used chiropractic and, you know, for our family, it worked really well. And, you know, the first thing I want to say is chiropractic is not for everyone. And that's just the um, different health cultures we have. There will always be people who want to rely on drugs and surgery and that works for them. There is a growing movement, as we've already said, for people who want to explore other options beyond drugs and surgery. And that movement has been growing in the last 10 years and so more and more people are taking their children to chiropractors, um, and which means then when they're working with that inner master controller of the body and the body's better able to self-regulate and heal, often there's less need for having drugs or having any kind of intervention. So there's been a bit of a turf war going mm. on, unfortunately, um, you know, with the medical profession and then with allied health and chiropractic is, you know, the second most utilised health profession in Australia after the, after GPs. And so, you know, I think what the public don't realise is that the background there is more just this competitive nature. And it's, it's sad because it's really not about what's going to get the best health outcomes. And I think our current healthcare system can do better. It really should be about what how can we collaborate as health practitioners to get the best health outcomes for people? And, you know, a, there's a lot of cases where drugs and surgery just aren't that option, you know. And so I think, you know, um, shows like that kind of want to portray allied health practitioners, chiropractors as these hippie freaks. And, you know, chiropractors train for five years. Mm. You know, there's master's programs, the, you know, um, you know, double um, bachelors, wherever you are studying in the world. And it's five years of intensive training, mm. you know, and we really get to the crux of how the, um, the central nervous system works with the gut, which works with the immune system. And so I believe there's always a place for medicine, you know, particularly emergency medicine. Mm. My, you know, our second... Um, eldest burnt his eyeballs recently, you know, doing the, the teenage boy thing of making an explosive with his friends. There was nowhere else I would rather be than in a hospital with mm, him. Absolutely. You know, my mum had a heart attack. There's nowhere else that we would have wanted to be. So there's definitely a place for emergency medicine. When it comes to health and wellness, a lot of the practitioners within allopathic medicine or orthodox medicine, they don't know a lot about health and wellness. They're not trained in that way. Mm. And yet because they've had the monopoly on healthcare for a long, long time and big pharma, you know, they fuel that. If you look at their marketing on radios, you know, if pain persists, see your doctor. So we've all been indoctrinated into thinking that we kind of hand our health over. And when we look at what's happening today, it's not serving us. That's right. And I think it's preventative too. Coming yeah. and seeing a chiropractor regularly before any health issues actually present themselves. Yeah, it's an investment. It's the key to, yeah, yeah, it's an investment into your health. It's it's taking control of your health yeah. before it turns to yeah. SHIT. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's true. I mean, yeah. It well, is. And sometimes, you know, that investment might take a little bit of time and we're so used to getting these, you know, fast results. Um, but but fortunately, you know, more and more people realise if they invest consistently in their health, that's what gives them the long-term gains. Mm. Now, you talk about being a self-confessed goal setter in, yes. <laughs> in some of your <laughs> collateral out there. Yeah. Um, now, you're setting goals not only for yourself and, and your life, but also for the chiropractic industry as a whole. Yeah. What is What is your goal for the industry? What is your big vision that you see and that you wish for going yeah. forward? I think since I was very little, you know, growing up in that family practice and just being so immersed in families experiencing chiropractic, I think that, you know, I would love to see on a global scale that families had the awareness that chiropractic is, you know, an integral part of health and well-being. Mm -hmm. And so that families worldwide realise that having a wellness chiropractor is just like 
eating wholesome, clean food. It's like exercising regularly. It's like meditating and getting quality sleep, having someone work on the master controller system of your body and removing any interference so that your body heals, your body self-regulates. That's what health is about. You know, your body does the rest. Chiropractic care is is very quickly being looked at in a more holistic way. 10 years ago, in my opinion, it was got a sore neck, got a sore back, go and see the chiropractor. It's just so much more than that. And that's obviously what you're trying to share out there with the world. It's so important. Even with pregnancy, tell us about how it can be so beneficial with pregnant women in particular. Yeah, sure. I think it, it really gets back to the fact that when pregnant women are being adjusted, And, you know, they talk about 80% of pregnant women have some kind of health challenge. You know, they get low back pain, they get headaches. And a lot of that is to do with the hormonal changes that happen in pregnancy and then weight gain and all of those things. So if they've had old injuries, it's often going to flare up in pregnancy. And fortunately, a lot of pregnant women are aware that, you know, there are potential dangers of taking, you know, pain-killing drugs and those things in pregnancy And so more women are seeing chiropractors. And the beauty in that is when the spine and the pelvis sit in an aligned way, then our babies have the room to move and Mm -hmm. grow. And unborn babies, the babies in the womb, they learn through movement. So we want our babies moving. And when they're held in a breech position, when they're held, you know, awkwardly, then, you know, there's growing evidence that that may potentially impact them long term. And so... <clears throat> chiropractors work a lot on helping pregnant women to have good alignment, which may then help them have more of a straightforward birth with less intervention. Okay. And so births are unpredictable. You know, I mean, I've had five of them and, and you can never always predict what's going to happen. But um, I guess when I work Maritza with couples is trying to remind them that, you know, it's not, births one of those conversations that can polarise people, particularly Mm. women. And, you know, it's really unfortunate. You know, you can have someone who, you know, even on the radio, you might have a celebrity who compliments his wife for having, you know, this amazing birth and how great she was for not having drugs. And, you know, everyone automatically assumes that then if you have a cesarean, then, you know, somehow you're less or he's judging that process. And, you know, again, births are unpredictable, but part of my vision is helping to explain to pregnant women and to couples because it, you know, it needs to be decided together that there's now solid research that talks about how we're born. So our mode of delivery, lots of research, how we're born impacts our microbiome. Medical journals throughout the world talking about that that microbiome then, if it is offset from having a cesarean birth versus a, you know, a natural birth, that then can predispose those children for allergies, for asthma, obesity, cardiovascular disease, and then if they're not breastfed. And, you know, it's, you know, sometimes even the listeners now might be thinking, oh, what's she saying, you know, have I done wrong by having a cesarean or for not breastfeeding my children? It's not about that. It's not about us. It's really about thinking when we're pregnant, okay, these are my options. These are the pros and cons. This is what I want to lean towards. But heck, if I can't have a natural birth what can I do to help set up that microbiome? If I can't breastfeed, what are my next best options? Mm. You know, it's not about judgment. I think parenting is just this competition most of us never wanted to enter. Mm. And it's ridiculous. I mean, really, we all have the same goal. We want to have healthy kids. Judgment is huge in parenting, yeah. like you've said. And and probably not even from other people. It's from ourselves, yeah. <laughs> judging ourselves. Absolutely. It's frightening. I Listening to yeah. that too, I had a lot of trouble breastfeeding and... Yeah. I, I was thinking exactly what you just said. Said I was judging myself for yeah. not doing it, and yeah, it, having those options to build that immunity elsewhere yeah. is is really important. And yeah. to really think about that, and not just go with the motions, and trusting yeah. your intuition is something that is really important. And you talk about a lot yeah. too, because as a parent, only we know our children best, right? That's right, absolutely, yeah. and it is. It's you know, we know them, we know the cues they're giving us, we know their environment. And, you know, a great analogy is if all the fish in a lake system were dying, you know, if they all were getting cancer, if they were all, you know, ending up um, dying in great numbers, the biologists wouldn't give those fish drugs or Mm. surgery. They would look at what's changed in their environment. That's very true. 
And as parents, we know our kids' environment. Are they having more sugar that's offsetting their immune system? Like I said, are they not getting enough sleep? Have they had knocks and falls, you know, and need to have their spine and nervous system checked? Are they sitting on digital equipment in these, you know, stooped positions for hours on end, which creates strain as well? You know, was their birth with a lot of trauma? Mm. I did put a question out to my listeners before today, and one of them wanted to know about more serious health issues when it came to children. Yeah. Um, because obviously, you know, the ear infection and, and the small little things, the common yeah. common sense to common problems is one thing. What about the bigger health concerns, like some of the things you mentioned earlier, autism yeah. and Asperger's? How can we be on top of that and sort of feed ourselves with knowledge on that topic yeah. coming from a natural approach? Yeah. And look, it's a great question. And I think if you dive into it, there's, you know, a lot of common factors involved with autism or any neurodevelopmental challenge, um, any of those sort of spectrum things, even as adults, you know, Alzheimer's and some of those things. When you when you dive into it, a lot of it comes back to the connection between the brain and the gut and the immune system. And a lot of the inflammation that happens in the gut, the leaky gut scenario, um, an overload on the detox organs. There's a lot of paths involved. And I think if parents got empowered and had a read about that, there would be different holistic health practitioners who more and more these days are so happy to work together and to really support the child and the family through that. One of the roles that I see chiropractic playing more and more as we you know, progress is that you know, chiropractic is, is based on that premise that I said of health comes from within and it's based on um, that philosophy, it's based on science, so research and then the art of what we deliver. The science within chiropractic is building mm. and what we're seeing is research that demonstrates chiropractic has an impact on the prefrontal cortex of the brain, so a particular part. The reason I bring that up, Maritza, is because when we look at autism, when we look at neurodevelopmental challenges, often there's inflammation in the gut which opens the gut wall even further so that then what protects the brain, that blood-brain barrier opens up even further and we see inflammation in the brain. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens or what we're seeing is in those scenarios that those children, their brains aren't pruning. They're not doing the gardening very well in those first two years in particular. That's when most of the pruning happens. And so I think, you know, if parents have any question around their child's development... Um, I would be sourcing, you know, a recommended chiropractor in their area because, as I said, the adjustments help with that prefrontal cortex. The pruning happens in that prefrontal cortex and we need to get the inflammation down in these children. And so, you know, there's some real mental giants in our profession who are working on this research and I think that's one of the powerful ways that we're really moving because, again, you know, everything is figure outable. It might take time. It might mean collaborating with a practitioner who's going to help on the allergies and the gut side, but then, you know, a chiropractor who can work with the nervous system and um, and some of those developmental milestones. Inflammation just seems to be the, the cause of most health issues. It's massive. Yeah. It really is. And it's that inflammation that's triggering genes, you know, in a way that we've never seen before. Mm. So it's a way to manage that inflammation. Tell us about how you've raised your Four beautiful boys. <laughs> I know. How old are they all now? Um, the youngest is eleven, yeah. and the eldest is just turned nineteen. And he's so. about to head off on yeah. a, to another country. I know. <laughs> how are you feeling about that? Oh, look, he's so excited, and he's got some friends going, so it's hard to be anything other yeah. than you know delighted for him. And he's ready. He's ready for a challenge. Yeah. Um, you know, it's parenting. It's. You know, I, I tend to think that it's good to say to people, oh, it's all smoke and mirrors because like we talked about before, you know, mm. everyone's judging themselves so harshly. And I think as a parent, you just do the best you can. You know, if you're working, if you're, you know, just have a number of things on your plate on a day-to-day -day basis, it's really about, I think, cutting yourself some slack. And I think one of the best things parents can do today is take the time to connect you know, it's like that old saying, it takes a village to raise a child. Our village these days is podcasts. It's, it's books. It's, you know, it's courses, it's associations. It's anywhere we can get um, hold of great information to keep us inspired. So very true.
You know, because if we're not inspired about our parenting, about our kids' health, we get complacent and then we swallow somebody's Kool-Aid and that might not work for us in 12 months' time. Mm, absolutely. You know? So I think for me, um, you know, I realised early on I had to do things that fueled my level of inspiration because it's mind-numbing being a parent. You know, you're tired. And so on a daily basis, I, you know, I listen to great stuff or I read good things and it just means that, you know, it's – it's a better version of who I am. Amazing. Now you've written a few books and yep. you've spoken on many stages and yep. you've been on radio and podcasts endlessly. What's next for you? How are you screaming your message from the <laughs> rooftop going forward? Um, look, I mean, I'm super excited about what I've learned the last few years. And so I'm madly creating new products, which will all be online modules. So a preconception module, which will be, you know, me giving sort of a number of hours of video content and really getting couples prior to conceiving to understand what's happening for kids today and how can they proactively set themselves up to be super duper healthy before they have a baby. Because there's a lot of fear, mm. you know, our kids are suffering. They're like, oh my God, what if I have a child with autism? What if I have a child with allergies? Um, and then, so I've got five different modules like that and um, I've got a lot of connections and stuff happening in America. So it's, yeah, it's very exciting. Are you still years. consulting, Jen? On a minimal level. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a token effort in the practice, uh, but I do a lot more online, so, yeah. which is great. Yeah, I love that. So I can, you know, be, I guess, consulting anywhere in the world, which is nice. Well, congratulations on Thank all you. of your massive achievements. I know Thank there's you. plenty more to come when it comes to achievements on your stage. So I really appreciate your time here with us today and I, I, I commend you on everything that you've done. If any, anyone wants to reach out to you, what website can they get you on? Yep, so it's just welladjusted.co um, and there's a, um, you know, a part there where they can contact me personally if they want to. Go and check out what Jennifer has been doing and if you would like to get involved in the conversation and let me know what you thought of this episode or if you have any questions for Jennifer that I can pass over, please get in touch with me on Instagram at Maritza underscore Barone. Be sure to be happy, be healthy, be conscious and be kind.